When did you try stand up for the first time? When did you realize, okay, were you always funny or you, your your understatedness was just your personality all the time? Well, this what? is, you know, this is just how I talk like this, but I was funny with my couple buddies mm -hmm. in school. Yes. I wouldn't, wouldn't want the classes to make the class laugh. Yeah. But I was just funny with them and uh I would watch The Tonight Show all the time with Johnny Carson. Mm -hmm. My brother was four years older than me, so we had to watch what he wanted. Mm -hmm. and, he, and so I, he, I would just watch him. And eventually, I, I, you know, everyone would be asleep, and we'd be watching Johnny. And yep. then I suddenly hooked in, like, see a guy come out and mm -hmm. talk about life and all this weird angles, funny uh, reflection of what he experienced. And I, I started to hook into that and then Johnny himself I loved it and it became like a this magical thing I really that's when I was really drawn to it mm -hmm. and I thought wow maybe I, I would like to do that maybe to be one of those guys and then speaking of the Bruins so I would listen to the Bruins on the radio mm -hmm. in bed and one night I was fooling around with a dial and I stumbled on this comedy show a guy in boston he played two comedy albums every sunday night yeah two whole albums so then i hooked into that so i'm tuning into that for like two years and i'm like studying it without knowing it yeah i'm thinking oh i like that guy oh that's it oh i don't know so then then the tonight show and carlin and then it became like my dream, like a kid wants to be a baseball player yeah. or an astronaut. And, and you wanted was, to be a comic. Yeah. So when did you, when was your first big break, Stephen Wright? When was that? Well, I went, I started doing it when I was 23 in uh, Boston and in the clubs. And uh, in Cambridge, there was a Chinese restaurant comedy club called the Ding Ho Comedy Club. It <laughs> okay. was it's just this, you know, the front was a like with a, audience and everything in the bar and then the back was a Chinese restaurant and someone wrote an article about it because it was such a bizarre situation yeah and for some reason it went in the LA Times I don't know why and then Peter LaSalle who was the producer of the Tonight Show sure he saw the article and then like eight months later he was going to Boston to his kids were going to get out of high school so he was, they had a summer trip to look at colleges New York and Boston, and he remembered the club, so he called up and he said he was going to go there, and he went there, and 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 then he saw me, and then two, three weeks later I was on the Tonight Show. On the Tonight yeah. Show, so he, it, it was like a fairy tale. So you know? if you didn't do your comedy in a Chinese restaurant, do you think you'd have been discovered, Stephen? I mean, obviously, or n maybe not as quickly by... Not, a, not, as, not as quickly. What the hell was that uh, like for you to be on The Tonight Show three well, weeks after being in a Chinese restaurant? I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, what did it, what I just say, was that... <laughs> well, you put it that way. I don't know if that's, if that's false, if anything no, I just said was true, false. It's true, it was just the way you assembled <laughs> it three weeks after. You could yeah. have said that to Neil Armstrong. Well, if you're on the Chinese restaurant, then you're on the moon. Like, how do you know? Like, it, 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 yes, it was, one it was... from column A, one from column Johnny. I mean, my gosh. From back in the column day. Column Johnny. Yeah. It was surreal because they just explained how big that show was to me. Yeah. For all those years. Sure. So then to be on there, it was just magical. And I've remained friends with Peter all, all these years. You know, I mean, would I, a lot of my career has been a lot of flukes, a lot of accidents. But, I mean, I know that I do what I do, but you need, there's other things involved to, to for something to happen somewhere. You know, like the, the Chinese restaurant, the person writes the article. Why is it in the L.A. Times? The places in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The co kids going to college, going summer trip. So when this you start taking off, HBO reaches out to you, and you you were one of the first to have a, a comedy special on home box office, Stephen. Well, Carlin had them, Steve Martin. And, right. Yeah, so when I went on The Tonight Show, then everything changed, touring, live, clubs, and then HBO, and then an album, and then playing theaters. And it was all because of Peter LaSalle and Johnny Carson. So you got a good Carlin story, Stephen? 
Well, I, I met him several times, which was like, oh my God, I'm talking to George Carlin. Right. He was a very regular guy. He was just a regular guy, but genius. He's a genius. A lot of people um, from my generation of comedians mm. have him on the Mount Rushmore. Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, the, the amount, I think he did 18 HBOs. Mm -hmm. So even the volume and how the quality... Mm -hmm. He's one of my heroes in my whole life. So who else is on your Mount Rushmore uh, of comedians? Richard Pryor, mm -hmm. um, Dave, David Brenner, Robert Klein. Those guys, from when I was saying, when sure. watching all that time. Right, starting out. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.